Hello, I'm one of the respiratory therapists from Midwest Medical, and today we are going to talk about the Trilogy 100 ventilator. Okay, first we're going to show you the back of the ventilator. Over on the side is a filter, and this filter needs to be cleaned weekly or more often if necessary if it looks dusty or dirty. You simply remove the filter, you can rinse it out with warm water, squeeze it out, and let it air dry, and then replace it. If you have an extra filter, you can just replace it immediately and, and wash your other filter. Also, you want to make sure that nothing blocks this area of the back of the ventilator. Below your filter, you have your oxygen port. So if you're using oxygen with the ventilator, this is where you will attach your oxygen tubing. You never want to attach your oxygen tubing in the circuit. You always want to bleed in your oxygen in the back of the ventilator. I'm going to move over here to the other side. The ventilator has an internal battery that will last you three hours. There's also a removable battery, which is right here, that can come out and be changed if you have an extra battery. This battery will charge while it's in the ventilator and plugged into your wall outlet. It takes about eight hours to get a full charge on it. This is your power cord, which is plugged into the side of the ventilator, actually, and then goes into your wall outlet. The ventilator also has a bracket attachment, so you have the availability to attach this to a stand if you like. So that is everything that's on the back of your ventilator. Okay, now we're looking at the side of the Trilogy ventilator. You can see you have your power cord down at the bottom. Um, the Trilogy ventilator has the capability of using either a passive or an active circuit. Right now, the Trilogy is set up to use a passive circuit. There's a exhalation porting block on the side that is removable and can be changed um, whether you're using a passive or an active circuit. Right now it's set up for the passive circuit and I'm going to show you how that would attach. First I'm going to put a filter and then I will attach my passive circuit. You can see that there's only a large pore tubing on the passive circuit. There's also an exhalation port. Um, this is one example of, of an exhalation port on a passive circuit. Okay, now we have the Trilogy set up with an active circuit porting block. All we did was change the porting block. There's a screw that comes out and you would just take the porting block out and replace it. We know this is an active porting block because it has the two outlet ports on it for your sensing line and your exhalation line. So when we attach the tubing, again we're going to use a filter and then we're going to attach our large bore tubing. Then we have our sensing line and our exhalation line, which are actually two different diameters, so you cannot mix up your lines. The smaller diameter line will go on the bottom, just pushes right on, and the larger one will go on the top. And you just push them on nice and tight. And then you also have an exhalation valve in your active circuit. And this is an example of an exhalation valve in an active circuit. Okay, now I'm going to show you how to hook up a heated humidifier in line with your ventilator. Um, if you are going to be using a heated humidifier, just a standard heater, you're going to need a ventilator circuit with water traps. If you're using a heated wire circuit, you will not have water traps in your circuit. So what you will need to do is disconnect your vent circuit from the ventilator. You're going to have another length of tubing that you are going to connect from your ventilator to your humidifier. And then coming off the other side of the humidifier, you will attach your ventilator circuit. So it will look like that. This is the front view of your ventilator. Over on the bottom corner is your on-off switch. Above that you have your silence button. 
Here's your display screen, and then down here are all of your control buttons. Okay, so now I'm going to turn the ventilator on with the power button down here in the corner. So I'm going to push the button. It's going to power up. It's going to go through a quick little self-check of the alarm. And then it's going to start ventilating your patient. For demonstration purposes, we have it hooked up with a test lung. So what you're seeing now is a, is a detailed view screen. Up on the top is your monitoring panel. And this is going to show you um, which, if you have it in active or passive, and which mode that you're using it in. So right now we have it in passive and assist control. We've also got the time date over here. And then this is your bar um, graph that's showing the pressure that's being generated with each breath to your patient. There's also some patient data information shown here, um, respiratory rate, your exhale tidal volume, and some other, some other information. Down here also it's showing you your battery charge levels. Right now it's telling us that we have our, our detachable battery and our internal battery. Both are on. Um, the detachable battery, it's showing us a little green indicator and it's fully charged because there's different bars in here and it's full green all the way up to the top. If you were using it on the detachable battery and you started using some of your battery time, these would start to become clear. Right now we have it plugged into the wall and it's charging our internal battery and we know that because this little yellow lightning bolt is showing. Now if I unplug the machine from the wall and it's no longer using our wall power, it's going to alarm at me and tell me that. So I'm going to hit the silence reset button to make the alarm stop and then in order to reset our our yellow light here that's telling me the AC power is disconnected I'm going to hit the reset button at the bottom. Now you'll notice that there's a black box around the detachable battery and it's showing us that because that is the power source that the ventilator is running off right now. Now if I pull out the detachable battery It's going to again give me a little indicator that I took that battery out. I'm going to reset it. And now it's being used on the internal battery. And I know that because the black box is around the internal battery. If I put the detachable battery back in, it's going to show me that I did that and it's going to put the box back around the detachable battery. And now I'm going to plug the machine back into the wall. And all the black boxes are going to disappear because it's using the current from the wall. But it's giving me the lightning bolt because I did unplug it and I'll plug it back in so it's going to charge. So that's everything that you can see at this point on the screen on the front of the ventilator. Now I'm going to show you how to get into the menu to um, look at what your settings are at. You're not going to be able to make any changes in the settings. This is just so that you can look at what your settings are at when you do your vent checks. You're going to use the up down arrows to get into your menu. So I'm going to push the up arrow as it tells me to do right here. It says menu with an up arrow. So I'm going to push that. So my menu screen is going to come up. Now I'm going to scroll down with the down arrow to where it says information and then over here where it says select I'm going to push the button below that. Now it's going to go through and tell me all the information that I'm going to need to know. It's going to tell me what mode I'm in, what circuit type, what my tidal volume and breath rate and inspiratory time and all the important things that I need to know so that I can write them down or check my settings to make sure they're set correctly. When I'm done in this screen then I simply come over to where it says finish, push the button below that, and then to exit my menu I push the exit screen. 
So it's as simple as that to just go in and see what your settings are at. The Trilogy has the capability of setting dual settings in the machine. You will have a primary and a secondary setting, and these would be ordered by your physician, and we would put them into the machine, and you would just need to know how to switch back and forth to those different settings. Now, it's very easy to do that. What you would do is go into your menu again by hitting the top arrow, and the very first thing that shows up on the top says switch to secondary settings. Right now we know we're in primary settings because it says passive and then there's a little one here and then it says AC for assist control. So if I want to switch to the secondary settings, I'm all set to go. I would just go ahead and push the select button. It's going to ask me do I want to switch to secondary settings. I'm going to hit the yes and now it's switched to the secondary settings. There's a number two up here and you can see it's different. It says ST instead of AC. And then I would exit out. So I'm just gonna show you that again really quickly. You're going to hit the menu button. It's going to tell you right on the top to switch to primary or secondary settings. If I hit these arrows right now, it would take me down the menu. So I would just wanna leave it right up at the top I'm going to hit the select button, I'm going to hit the yes, and there it is, it's changed. Then I can exit out of the menu and I'm good to go. Now we're going to talk a little bit about alarms. Um, the ventilator has a number of different alarms that can be set and those alarms are set differently according to your patient and which mode we're using this in. I'm going to talk about a few of the more common alarms that would be set in almost any mode. One of those would be your high pressure alarm. So right now we have our high pressure alarm set at 40 and we know that because there's a little marker here showing us that. So if your patient high pressures, I'm going to show you what that would look like. So you would get an alarm anytime the pressure would go up above the, the preset of 40 in this case. Um, some things that can cause a high pressure alarm could be any sort of obstruction in your tubing, if your patient needs to be suctioned, water in the line, coughing, any of those things. And those are all things that would be caused externally from the ventilator. It's not a problem with the ventilator, the ventilator is just letting you know that the pressure is exceeding what you have your limit set at. Another alarm would be a low pressure alarm, and then there's also a disconnect alarm on this ventilator. So I'm going to show you what those would look and sound like. So what I can do now is I can go ahead and hit the silence on the ventilator. I can find my problem and now it's generating pressure again. We can see that my alarm indicator light went out and I have no audible alarm. It's right here it's showing me which alarms I had and I can just hit the reset button to clear that and everything looks back to normal because I don't hear any alarms, I don't see any visual alarms. The thing that's important to remember when you get any type of alarm, if it's a ventilator alarm, if you think it's something with your patient, you always want to take a look at your patient, check your patient first and foremost, make sure your patient's okay before you do anything else. Then you need to go ahead and look at your circuit, make sure everything's connected. Um, you want to make sure that there's no water in the line, um, nothing's crimped or obstructed, and a, a troubleshooting tip um, that you can always use if you've checked everything well and you're still having problems and your patient's fine it could be a couple of other things it could be a problem in the circuit you may have to change your circuit or another thing you can keep in mind is your patient's trach tube if your cuff is deflated or inflated those are all things to keep in mind and then of course if you're ever having any issue you can always give us a call at Midwest Medical and we will be happy to help you do any troubleshooting. 
To turn the ventilator off, you just come over here to the corner to your on off button. You're going to push that button and then it's going to ask you if you want to power it off. You're going to say yes and the ventilator is shut off. I hope that has been helpful. If you have any further questions, please give us a call here at Midwest Medical at 763-780-0100 and ask to speak with a respiratory therapist. Thank you.